Hi, uh, in, this dem in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, the use of or some of the programs that you can write with Morphologica. Um, so Morphologica is a uh, set of simulation support facilities um, so it deals with uh, configuration, uh, the saving of data and visualization. Um, in this video I'm just going to show you some of the visualizations that you can um, uh, create with Morph Visual. So um, if I run this demo program, here's a, an example, um, Morph Visual. So Morph Visual gives you a kind of um, a, a gaming engine for data visualization. Um, it gives you this world into which you can place objects. Um, some of these objects are text objects. Um, and then I've got in the middle here, I've got a hex grid object. So if I zoom in on that, you can see that it's made up of hexagonal elements. Um, so it's a kind of color map. And down on the bottom left here is a coordinate arrow object. Um, I can right click uh, with the mouse cursor on the hex grid visual and uh, move it around. Um, and I can left click on the scene and rotate all the objects in the scene around to look at them at different angles. Okay, so there's a basic more visual environment. Um, I can uh, so all the um, uh, all the objects in a more visual are based on the visual model base class. Um, this is a scatter visual. Um, it's just a whole load of spheres. Um, they've got different colours, and in this case, I've got a lighting shader. So the shade you get, you can get a sense of the shape of the spheres. Um, my next demo is uh, similar. It's a quiver plot in this case. Um, the nice thing about these um, visualizations is that they are very efficient. So um, a lot of the processing goes on in the GPU uh, for when you're rotating it around and moving it. Um, and um, uh, you can uh, it doesn't take a huge amount of CPU use to generate the image in the first place. So there's a quiver plot. Um, and um, there's a class called uh, Graph Visual, which is for making graphs. We've got four graphs here, um, sort of four basic types of graphs. The idea is to be able to make nice looking graphs that you can dynamically update while you're running um, a simulation. Um, if I rotate the environment here, you'll see one of these graphs, I've, uh, I've set that graph to be rotatable. The other graphs are set uh, to uh, not rotate when I rotate the environment, but I can move them all around by right clicking. Um, so you can see that they're, they're 3D objects, but they're typically placed uh, two dimensionally. Okay, so lots of nice graphs. Um, and then the key feature of, um, or the key feature that I wrote Morphologica for was the ability to be able to run dynamic simulations with visualization while the simulation was running to allow me to uh, find out if there was a problem with the code that I'd written. Maybe I'd taken some mathematical equations and tried to implement them in a simulation but made an error so that the, the simulation wasn't um, correctly representing the equations. Or perhaps there's um, uh, just an instability in the numerical um, solutions that I'm trying to uh, obtain for the, uh, the equation system. Um, so the ability to actually watch your uh, system run uh, in real time and graph in real time is really what Morphologica or Morph Visual is incredibly useful for. So this is an example of a Keller-Siegel equation system. Uh, this is uh, uh, a, um, a simulation of chemotaxis, um, although um, Bardem and Trout wrote a paper in 2009 that we were very interested in which applies this Keller-Siegel system to um, the uh, whisker sub-barrels so he labelled uh, one of the variables in the system axon density and the other one chemo um, and uh, used it to talk about um, uh, sub-barrel patterns. Um, but what we can see here is we can see um, uh, a pattern beginning to build in the two uh, variables in the, in the system. The ability to be able to sort of turn the, um, the surfaces around is very useful. I can see that the, uh, the C variable is just getting larger overall than the N variable, even though there's a sort of similar amplitude of the structures in each one. So that can tell me quite a lot about the uh, system that I perhaps couldn't get just from looking at the, uh, the images. Um, 
although that said these are using the same color map so uh, the different colors of the two different maps gives me that information as well um, down here um, I've got a two-dimensional graph showing me the sum of n and the sum of c across the whole domain um, so I can keep an eye, eye on what that's doing as well um, and I could potentially create another graph here and track the, um, the value of say an individual hex or a small group of hexes basically I can, I can do whatever I want in terms of uh, examining the system uh, while it's running um, so there's a small demo system uh, running um, and then if I quit out of that one um, I'm going to run another one which is, um, this is a wor work in progress here um, so this is uh, a retinotectal simulation um, and over here I've got neurons laid out in on a kind of simulated retina so that's a scatter visual um, of the neurons where I'm so by visualizing this I can tell that the algorithm I wrote for creating this concentric set of circles works correctly because they all look they obviously in the right place um, I've got two hex grids there showing um, some guidance gradients um, those are gene expression gradients um, and then I've got a whole ton of um, hex grids running here so this simulation is running on my laptop and there are actually 108 variables in this model um, we're seeing a half of those so 54 uh, maps there um, and um, as the simulation progresses we can see you can just see that these are all monochrome color maps here so um, they have a different each one has a different color um, but, and they all go from zero white or unsaturated no color to color being the maximum so we can see that we've got uh, like if we look at, zoom in on these the blue and the purple one you can you can see um, the the purple one here, A46, has got the maximum down sort of the bottom left of its ellipse and, and the blue one's up towards the top left. Um, and in this uh, simulation I'm having problems with the um, uh, the computation goes uh, uh, unstable at a certain point and I've been uh, using this system to try and establish where, in fact you can just see it going now up here. Here it is, there it goes unstable, and then we get uh, not a numbers in there, and the, the uh, simulation stops. So that's a work in progress, but it gives you an indication of how I'm using Morphologica and Morph Visual to try and understand um, uh, my numerical computations. Um, okay, and then uh, last demo is uh, this is the work of Stuart Wilson and um, he has, this is a work in progress that he's been uh, doing, um, this is an implementation of a model called the GCAL model which is based on the LISON model um, and this is just uh, you know, another example of somebody using uh, more visual to build up a really nice kind of dashboard of what's happening with their model. In this case uh, he's presenting different uh, shaped images onto a retinal map, those are being processed in this neural network model through two two other maps called LGN on and LGN off which are then producing a fourth map the uh, visual cortex um, and uh, this system self-organizes a kind of uh, orientation selectivity in the visual cortex neurons um, so that's a nice uh, use of more visual um, okay I think at that point I'm going to leave it there say thanks for watching and I hope you can find uh, Morphologica useful.